there's a lot of things to say about sleep, both as an anti-aging strategy, as a weight loss strategy, believe it or not, uh, and as a general strategy for health. Uh, I'd consider getting a good night's sleep one of, definitely one of the five top strategies you can do to extend your life. And here's why. Uh, a lot of stuff happens during sleep. Uh, biochemicals are replaced. Hormones like melatonin are secreted and growth hormone. These are very, very important for human health. Uh, we have adapted to this electrically based society in which lights are on all the time and computers are available all the time. And if you go back to, again, uh, kind of our, our heritage as, as the species, as the human species, we kind of went to bed when the sun went down and we woke up when the sun came back in. And that is closer to our natural biorhythms. So we're very sleep deprived. Uh, the standard ad advice is to get seven or eight hours. It's not bad advice, but I am a big believer in biochemical individuality. I think people can adapt to a fairly wide range of foods and diets and sleep. But I don't think we do well with four or five hours. And we certainly don't do well with anxious sleep, interrupted sleep. And I don't think that sleep gets the credit it should get as an anti-aging strategy. Uh, if you look at some of these very long-lived uh, cultures where, where, you know, these little pockets around the world that they call the blue zones, where people routinely live to 100, uh, they don't take Ambien. They don't have sleep problems. They, you know, the sun goes down, they go to sleep, they have a, a good night's sleep, they wake up in the morning. And I think that goes a long way towards getting us back on track as far as our biology goes, as far as our biorhythms go, the replacement of our hormones. And I think it's a very, very important and neglected part of health. When you don't sleep in an ideal way, when it's restless and you wake up and you've got nightmares and you've got, uh, you run to the bathroom 10 times or any of the things that uh, tend to keep us up through the night, uh, your body sees that as a stressor and it responds by releasing a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol is the enemy not only of health but also of a lean body. Uh, cortisol sends a message to the body that you're in an emergency state and you better refuel. And it also sends a message to the body to store weight around the middle, which, as we now know, is pretty much uncontested, that that is the most dangerous kind of fat. It's the most metabolically active kind of fat. And, you know, the apple shape is definitely more dangerous in terms of diabetes and metabolic syndrome and heart disease than, say, the pear-shaped uh, distribution of fat. So cortisol contributes to all of that. Uh, and when you've underslept, you also tend to overeat. I don't know if you've ever recently spent uh, a night doing an all-nighter, but the next day you will just you'll grab anything because your body is sending a primitive signal to refuel, refuel, emergency is coming. Uh, so it has a very profound effect on weight. And there's a lot of studies showing that uh, sleep problems are very related to obesity. The, the less you sleep or the, the more disturbed your sleep is or the greater uh, you have sleep problems, uh, the more risk there is for developing obesity. So I think that, that a good night's sleep, a deep restful sleep without electricity, without computers in the bedroom is a very, very powerful strategy for keeping your weight where you want it to be. And keeping your weight where you want it to be is one of the strategies for living longer. There are things you can do to improve sleep, and, and they're not expensive. In fact, they don't cost anything. They're just some strategies. Uh, the first one is, you know, get the electronics out of the bedroom. Now, it's really hard to get people to do that. It's even hard for me to get the TV out, but I tell you, sleep improves. Your, your bedroom is not a second office. You're, you know, I have bad news. We're not Hugh Hefner. We can't do everything in bed. Uh, the bed really should be for, you know, the fun of what the bedroom is for and for rest and relaxation. And the more you can set it up that way, you know, get a dark room with the right temperature. Uh, take your worries and, you know, put them on a list and leave them outside. They'll be there in the morning. Uh, if you can go to bed a half an hour early, because we found that it's difficult to sleep in as a strategy. It's much easier to add sleep if you just kind of train yourself to go to bed a little bit earlier. Uh, these things are really very powerful strategies for health, for reducing stress, which is also one of the four horsemen of aging, and for uh, reducing cravings, and for kind of getting you in hormonal balance that is conducive to keeping your weight where you want it to be and your stress levels where they need to be. Mm -hmm.